What does the media mean by the Francis effect? Is the Pope really running off at the mouth with heretical and modernist ideas? Is he becoming the hope and change Pope? Maybe there's more to this Francis effect than the media is letting on. We'll explore the stories you aren't being told this week live on Miked Up. The Francis effect is certainly real, but it may not have anything to do with Pope Francis. We go live this Wednesday, March 26th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. As touched on in yesterday's Vortex, men have had their masculinity stripped of them by the women's lib movement and the resultant hypersexualized society. What has been bequeathed to men in this current day is a bundle of confusion and a lack of any sense of what their manhood is oriented toward. In their youth, men feel their power, their strength, but they have no one to turn to to show them how to harness that power and how it should be properly directed or used owing to the absence of fathers. Left to their own devices, young men, feeling their power, will use it for themselves. Their deluded sense of the world being their oyster inevitably leads to trouble of one sort or another. They develop a certain sense of entitlement that the world owes them something. This feeling is fueled by the very real fact that so many young men today grow up with no father available to them sometimes physically absent, sometimes emotionally unavailable, but both with the same result. The deep longing in these boys' souls can oftentimes create a kind of psychodrama that plays itself out in all kinds of ways. Sometimes it leads to exploration of homosexuality. Sometimes it leads to barely controlled rage that gets vented on the weakest one in the room. Oftentimes a kind of emotional checking out occurs, again, fueled by a sense that they are owed something, which of course on the one level they are, but most likely will never receive. They check out of usual life, be it school, social commitments, family obligations, whatever, believing themselves to be so victimized that nothing they do to others is as bad as what has been inflicted on them. They become emotionally disconnected, but still have this burning desire to be connected it is the worst kind of love-hate dichotomy. The culture is awash in these young men, many of whom have physically matured now into middle-aged men and even older. And they have also entered the Catholic clergy, in some places in droves. And there is little else more dangerous than a man who does not know how to harness his masculinity, presenting himself before a congregation with a Roman collar around his neck. Weak men being ordained and even consecrated to bishop has been the bane of the church for the past 50 years. We call them father, but they are ill-equipped to bear such a noble title, not totally their own fault. The anger some of these men feel is not entirely unjustified. They were victimized in their youth. Turning around to look for a father to draw them up out of their silly, selfish boyhoods, they had no one. They deserved, they had a right to such a man, but one was not there for them. No one was available, so they had to go in search of something or someone to fill the role of father. Often enraged while at the same time despondent of their lot in life, they could encounter all kinds of mischief, and the diabolical is always prowling around doing its best to ensure that they did. Many men in the priesthood and the episcopate have undergone this kind of psychological stress. They are truly victims. Having been ordained, they carry this trauma into their priesthood and become paralyzed in their newfound role of father or shepherd. A father cannot live for himself any longer. His entire identity now exists outside of himself. The very title father plainly shows this. He now lives for his children, or he should be. But what if the man's still trapped and struggling with his pain, his rage, his hurt? He has not been able to move beyond it, and yet his very life demands that he lay it aside, have it already laid aside, lest he become ineffective as a father. Being accepted as a father by a parish can be a very powerful narcotic. 
It can have intoxicating influence. It can result in a priest or a bishop being psychologically unable to make the hard decisions that sometimes have to be made for the good of the children. Having already grown up with an inner sense of rejection by the one who was supposed to love him the most, the pain is too great to revisit, and therefore any decisions that might result in a new round of rejection will be so rationalized that they will never be made. Weak men, psychologically and emotionally weak men, who have never been taught how to be a father, have never learned it, can lead the flock astray with little effort because they do not understand because they have never been taught that a father lives for his children and not himself. But a weak man is weak specifically because he has this paradigm, paradigm totally backwards. He lives for himself, for his own desire to be accepted and not rejected. And too many men in authority in the church are unwilling to eschew this basic human desire, fueled by rage or self-doubt in favor of the needs of their flock. They crave being admired or advancing up the clerical ranks, clinging to these things in the belief that it makes them somehow lovable. So a paralysis has set in where the most common approach on the part of leaders is to offend as few of the faithful as possible. The rationalization is, of course, that this is done for the sake of unity. But the reality is that it is done because the psychodrama that weak men live with has never been resolved. The sins of the fathers of some priests and bishops, which have been visited on their now ordained and consecrated offspring, are now in their turn being visited on the spiritual children of the clergy. The sins of the fathers are indeed visited on the sons. We need to pray and sacrifice mightily for our priests and bishops, my fellow Catholics. The church will be impotent in fighting the powers of hell, of storming the gates of hell with weak men as leaders. Everyone has psychological junk to deal with. But there comes a time in the lives of some when it must be dealt with and laid aside, or those incapable of dealing with it must at the very least recognize that reality and step aside. Pray that God and God alone become the focus for these men. They may not have had a father on earth, but they have their divine father in heaven, and only he can fill that void and raise them to the models of himself. God love you. I'm Michael Vorce. If you're a serious Catholic who is concerned about the state of affairs in the church and you have a knack for the great outdoors, then please consider spending a fall vacation with churchmilitant.tv at the Flying Bee Ranch. The Flying Bee Ranch offers some of the most beautiful scenery west of the Mississippi. While being strengthened in the faith through a series of conferences from Michael Voris, you'll also have plenty of time to breathe that mountain air while horseback riding, fishing, or bird hunting. So please click the link to register today and we'll see you out there at the Flying Bee Ranch.